Hi everyone, um, this is Syra. Um, I'm going to start in a couple of minutes. I just wanted to make sure, can someone just put a little thumbs up or something in the chat to make sure you can see me and hear me and you can see my screen, which shows pay slips and income tax. Um, sorry about the funky angle I keep looking at. I've got a second screen just to make sure I see all your questions, etc. cetera. Um, can you guys see or hear me? Brilliant, thank you so much. Okay, fabulous. So let's get started. Um, the reason I've got it like this is so that I can use my mouse pointer to point at things. So I hope you find that useful. My name is Syra. I'm a doctor. I've just finished my foundation training um, at the Oxford Deanery. Um, I'm also a chartered accountant and um, I I'm currently doing an F3 and trying to decide what to do with my life. So if you're in the same position or you feel like you might be in the same position, don't worry, don't fret. You don't have to jump on the training treadmill. Take time, things are tough at the moment and it's absolutely okay to try and decide if you wanna change direction. So I'll jump straight in. Um, so basically, we're gonna go through what your pay slip looks like, what it means, what the definitions are We'll talk about different types of tax and we'll talk about um, contributions uh, that you would make and we will talk about uh, tax relief that you could attract as well. So payslip. You should get a payslip every month. You'll get it a few days before you get paid. Um, your payslip will summarise all your earnings, the deductions for that month and the pension contributions for that month. Always save a copy because you will need it in future. If not for tax purposes, you will need it for mortgage purposes to prove your income. Um, so always keep a copy. So don't worry, I'm going to deconstruct this and we're going to go through this together. Um, this is a sort of overview of what the different um, proportions of a, a payslip looks like. Um, so basically your um, assignment number will be here and that will be your employee number. Um, make sure that all your details here are correct, that they've got your job title correct, because you will not be surprised probably that things don't always go correctly when you've got your first pay slip. And if you're on, if you've even got the wrong job title or the wrong pay scale, it can mess things up going forward. So make sure everything here is correct. Make sure that they've got your base salary correct per the um, pay circulars. Make sure your national insurance number is also correct so that it uh, connects to the correct um, income tax uh, code. And we will talk about tax codes in more detail in a moment. So let's deconstruct this a bit more. So I'm going to break it up into four parts. The first part is what we talked about, your assignment number, make sure that's correct. Make sure your job title pay, and pay scale description are correct. Make sure that your base salary is correct here and make sure that your national insurance number and your tax code are correct. And we'll talk about tax code in a moment. Part two, this is the bit on the left here. And basically it's made up of your gross income. Gross income means income before anything has been deducted. So your basic pay is the basic pay rate based on 40 hours and then you get your additional pay which isn't on this one but you'll get some more based on if you're an F1 you end up doing 48 hours for example on average. You get night duty so that is a 37% 37, 37 uplift on your basic pay. You get your so you don't get Saturday Sunday increment anymore you get a weekend increment now which is just one figure. Um, and uh, whole time equivalent pay is not a thing anymore. So don't worry about that one too much. Just have a look and make sure that your hours kind of make up your, you're on the correct night and weekend amount. Part three, these are all your deductions. So you will have a deduction for PAYE, which is your income tax. Now for the first, two or three months. If this is your first ever job, you might not have deductions because you get a £12,750 
tax-free allowance before you start paying income tax. So if you haven't paid any income tax and you haven't used your tax-free allowance this tax year, that will be applied first and then you'll get deducted after that. So if you don't see these deductions on your pay slip for the first couple of months, that's why. Then you have your national insurance contributions, uh, NHS pension deductions, and this says car parking, which might apply to you. There'll be student loan in here as well. There might be mess fees. You might see um, car lease going out of this as well. Um, so that's where all your deductions are. So then here um, is your summary, including your, your deductions and your net pay. So your gross pay is the um, total of that left hand side that we looked at before. And the NI pay is basically this bit tells them how much to calculate the NI contributions on. So it's that pay. Pensionable pay is down here, which means the pension contributions of 9.3% will be calculated using this figure. That's because not all pay is pensionable. Only your basic pay is pensionable. Everything else isn't. So your taxable pay is this figure. Taxable pay differs because you might have your um, tax-free allowance, for example, which would make that a different figure to your gross pay. Um, so it might not be the same figure. So then your pensionable pay for that month is there, which is your basic pay. Um, your taxable pay is the total minus the deductions. Um, so here's the deductions. And then your net pay, your take home pay is here. And that is all the gross pay minus all the deductions equals your net pay. Tax codes. So the tax free allowance for this tax year is £12,750, which means that your tax code should be 1275L. So if we go up here, this one is slightly different and I'll explain why. But one, two, it should say 1275L cumulative and that is your correct tax code. You might be emergency tax codes, which is any, there might be a different figure in here. And if it ends in a W, M or X, then you're being emergency taxed. This is because your employer might not have updated HMRC yet. If it's a first ever job, you might be emergency taxed because they're still working out how much you'd make per year. If you had a part time job before starting, then that might overshadow and that might skew things. So you're best telling your previous employer that you no longer work for them and letting HMRC know that as well. And if you're getting benefits or a state pension, that can affect it as well. Emergency tax codes are always temporary. However, they can take a long time to fix if you're not proactive. They will at least be fixed by the end of the tax year because that's when HMRC does their review. But you can get in touch with them sooner than that if you need to. So income tax is basically based on this. So you have £12,570 where you don't get taxed. Then the basic rate of 20% is any amount between 12571 and 5270 the higher rate is anything between the 5271 to 150k, which is 40%. And then the additional rate is anything over £150,000 is taxed at 45%. And just to clarify, if you go over these bands, it doesn't mean everything ta is taxed at that tax rate. So the amount of money between these two figures is taxed at 20%. And then when you go above, the amount of money between those two type figures is taxed at 40. And then the money above that is taxed at 45. So it's graded. And this is calculated based on your gross salary after your salary sacrifice deductions. So it's calculated based on your pension. Once your pension contributions, your car lease, if you're doing that through the NHS through a salary sacrifice scheme, your child care vouchers, which if you're getting through that through your work, cycle to work scheme, um, all of those uh, deductions, 
are taken out and then this is calculated. So you pay income tax, which is that PAYE figure, on your basic pay over time and your weekend pay premium, for example. Any sort of payments you get, you pay that on. So national insurance is a flat deduction of 12.5% on any earnings over 9,500 and then 2% on anything above 50K. National insurance used to be a fund where we paid our national insurance and that was used to fund the NHS, but as costs have increased, that figure, that amount is used for all sorts of things, different benefits. You can get um, a national insurance statement and it can tell you what it's spent on. The government decides this, we have very little choice. Um, professional expenses. So you can actually apply to get tax relief on some professional expenses. So your BMA fees, your GMC fees, all Royal College fees, your second stethoscope onwards, not your first stethoscope. The, there's a flat fee you can request for washing your scrubs at home. And there's a flat fee for if you ever have to work from home on even one day in the year, you can claim a flat rate. And basically, you know, when I showed you this tax code here, what happens is your tax, the amount, this figure changes and goes up to reflect these expenses so that it reaches a slightly higher threshold before you start to pay tax. So it basically adjusts your tax-free allowance and that's how it gives you tax relief. So you don't immediately or automatically get a refund. It adjusts your tax code so you don't pay tax on those expenses. I recommend keeping a spreadsheet of all of these expenses and applying for your tax relief at the end of the tax year or just before the end of the tax year because the, the system's really clunky online and it doesn't show you what you've already applied for. So you know then what you've applied for based on your spreadsheet. Okay, I kept that really short on purpose because I think there's going to be quite a few questions. So in the chat, if you want to start throwing questions at me, go ahead and I'm more than happy to answer them. I'll move this over here and stop sharing. Right. Are there any questions about pay slips? I'm sure you got your pay slips for this month. What does 1257L non-cumulative mean? Basically, that's the correct tax code for you, but the non-cumulative means that at the moment, they're basing it on your, you will have a tax-free allowance, that 1257. So it won't be cumulative at this point because you're, they're applying that and then it becomes cumulative afterwards. So it's not an emergency tax code, that's the correct tax code for you. I'm an F1 in Wales and got deducted PAYE in error. Who am I to contact for reimbursement and to fix my tax code? You're not going to be reimbursed, I'm afraid. What you will need to do is you can get a government gateway account on HMRC's website. So I'd sign up for that and have a look at what information they hold on you. They might have the incorrect uh, they might have an ex another employer or something like that, and um, they might have put an emergency tax code, for example. If you can pop what your tax code is, I can let you know. You're not going to get a reimbursement. What you're going to do is you're going to be um, 
not deducted for future ones, for example. So it'll even out by the end of the tax year. Should I get paid for nights allowance in August if I have not done nights? Yep, so how it works is um, the pay based on the rotation that you're on is um, split out like evenly across the three or four months or six months, depending on how long you're doing it. So you will get a night allowance every month because what they'll do is they'll take your full rotation and then they'll split that across however many months you're doing it. So even if you don't do nights in that month, it, if you look at your pay slip whenever you do do nights, you'll see that it will be your pay for nights will be less that month because it's been split across the four months, if that makes sense. Have you paid PAYE? So you, okay, right. Um, for Joseph, that looks, yeah, so you pay, yeah, okay. So the C in front is not right. It should be just one, two, five, seven L. So that is um, an emergency tax. Sign up for a government, get, there's always errors in the first one. Sign up for a government gateway account online. See what information they have. HMRC holds on you and make sure that they've got the correct amount. There are some teething problems, in the, especially if this is your first job because they have to let, so your employer has to let HMRC know that you've started working for them. HMRC have to decide based on your first pay slip, how much tax are you going to possibly pay over the year? So what they do is they tax first and then they figure out as they go along because it's easier for them to get tax first and then give money back or relief back than it is to not tax first and then try and claw it back at the end. And so that's how they do it. So just check what information they have on you and make sure that they the information they have is accurate. Um, if you find that there's nothing really on your government gateway account that suggests that they've got the wrong information, then I would drop a message to your payroll and just let them know that you've been emergency taxed um, so that they can let HMRC know that you shouldn't be emergency taxed. That goes for you, Niveta, as well. You, you shouldn't have student loan deducted because it's your first job and your first degree. And technically, it's the student loans that have messed up there. So, and it's, so your first degree is the year, so if you finished this July, for example, you shouldn't be taxed until next uh, April. So um, let students know, student loan know, and let um, payroll know as well that you shouldn't be making a student loan payment yet. Hi, I'm working in Scotland. Our pay slips look a little different than the example shown on the slide. Should I have a few questions about that? My ask what is care super pay and care super con I have no idea, I'm so sorry. So these are all for England. For Scotland, your um, pay bands are different, um, but the S in front of it suggests it's been emergency tax because it should just be 1257L, nothing, not in front, nothing in front of it. I don't know what care super pay and care, care super contributions are, is it in the place of pensions, for example? Um, I I don't actually know. I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't tell you that. So it's not in your gross pay section and it's not in your deduction section. I don't know what tax, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not explaining tax credits. Tax credits is to do with benefits. That's out of the scope of this.
Okay, so things have gotten a bit confused. Timer, don't worry about it then because it's not it's not being added or deducted from anything. It just seems to be a title of something. As long as your gross pay is correct and your deductions are correct, that should be fine. Your I don't think there should be anything in front of the tax code. Um, I, it could mean Scotland. I don't know, but I don't think there should be. Um, non-cumulative. So basically the difference between cumulative and non-cumulative is that cumulative means that they know you're going to get the same um, payment amount every month so that they so they know they can put that tax code and it will correctly tax you every month. Non-cumulative is that they need to review, it's a note to them that they need to review your salary on a monthly basis to make sure you're on the correct tax code. So that's why your tax, your payslip says non-cumulative now. It's because it's probably your first payslip or your, it's definitely your first payslip for this employer. So they don't have any information going back that confirms whether or not you're going to be making this exact same amount every month or it's going to be much higher or much lower. So the non-cumulative is to review every month to make sure you're on the correct tax code. Once they have some patterns that they can use to so that they're happy you're on the correct tax code, they change that to cumulative. And then that means that they don't have to review it every single month. Okay, Heather, thank you, that's perfect. It's up until the payday. So not the day for the payslip, not the end of the month, it's up until payday. I don't know what pension ARRS means. Um, we could Google it together or you could Google it. Um, that's what I'd be doing. Um, so with that 1257L cumulative code, if you've got that, then HMRC thinks you're going to get the same amount every month. That isn't necessarily true. So what might happen is that they will tax you the same and then they might realize you're not making the same every month and then your tax code might get changed. I must get like three, four, five letters from HMRC a year of my tax code's been changed to this, that and the other because every time I rotate onto a different place, my monthly income changes and I've been on cumulative tax codes and non-cumulative tax codes. And so just because you're on a cumulative tax code, it means HMRC thinks you're going to get that same amount every month. That doesn't necessarily mean that's true. Yeah, so with the NI pay over 230 and PAYE for more than your colleagues, yes, that's why it was more. So it should be, it should even out by the end of the year because what will happen is they'll realize what you're making and then they'll adjust your tax code based on that. Um, how do we claim back on GMC and BMA fees? So basically what you do is you sign up for a government gateway account on the HMRC website. Oh, in that you go to the income tax section in the income tax section, there's a claim for professional expenses. Now it's a really clunky system where it doesn't actually show you what you've claimed for already. So when you do it, make sure you keep track of what you're claiming for. They don't give you an itemized list. They don't, nothing. It, it, basically you shove these numbers in and that's it. They don't like tell you what you've claimed for. So um, 
basically what you do is you have a drop down list of um, accepted organizations for which you can ask get the expenses back GMC is on there BMA is on there all the Royal Colleges are on there so um, you can basically select that one and then it'll tell you to put the amount that you paid and as long as it's not been reimbursed to you by your employer you can claim tax relief on that so that's how you do it is PAYE and NI different? Yes. So PAYE is income tax. So let me share that screen again. Hang on. So PA, can you, uh, let me move you guys. Hang on. There we go. So this PAYE is your income tax. Your income tax is taxed based on this table. Anything below 12,570 is taxed at 0%. Anything between 12,571 and 50,270 is taxed at 20%. Anything above that, 250K is at 40%. And anything over that, to anything over 150 Okay, it's um, 150,000 pounds is um, 45%. These are based on your gross salary after your tax deductible contributions have been done. So it's based on after pension contributions, after any leasing through the NHS, after any childcare vouchers, cycle to work scheme, etc. Your NI is different. Your NI is a flat rate. So basically we're taxed a lot is the short answer to this. Um, is a flat 12.5% on anything over 9,500 and then 2% on anything over 50k. So between 9,500 and 50k, you're taxed at 12.5%. Anything 50k onwards is at 2%. And it's basically your national insurance, you need to have enough national insurance um, deductions over your working life, so 30 years worth, to get a state pension. And you can look at, you can check what your deductions are on the government gateway account as well. Um, so you need basically 30 years worth of contributions to be able to claim a state pension. Okay. Additional roster hours is basically for you, your, con your 2016 doctor's contract is at 40 hours. And then anything over that is additional roster hours. So in F1, I was working 48 hours, not 40 hours a week. And so my eight hours were additional roster hours. What's the percentage we should be paying for pension as an F1? No, it's so everyone should be paying because our F1 salary is, um, well, I need to find that, 29 something something, I think. Um, and so it should be 9.3%. Let me double check. So, so our, there we go. So your pay should be here um, and it'll be 9.8% now, not 9.3, sorry. The thing is, if you're going less than full time, for example, um, that will be less because obviously you're, you're what is your 7.7% um, is, is incorrect. You're making too little. That's 7.7% there. That's not right. Yeah, base pay is uh, 29384 and then you get 37 for nights and then you get your weekend premium. So that's going to push you up over 30K. Um, 
that's not what we're worth. We're worth more than that. It's not what I'm saying, but you know, it is going to go up. Ah, okay. So yes, you're going to be at base pay, which is there. And so you're going to be at 7.7%. .7%. Yep. So that should be right for you, actually. Um, how do you suggest we check the payslip? I would suggest re-watching this video because I went through it in quite a bit of detail. So most of you will be on a 9.8% um, pension deduction because of all the other premier. If you're literally working nine to five, no additional roster hours, no weekends, no nights, no locums, and you're literally only just getting the base pay, then yes, it will be the reduced amount here to 7.7%. Yeah, I suggest um, claiming for the professional expenses at the end of the tax year, because if you, if you do it every time you incur the expense, what happens is as long but you have to be quite organized, you can do that if you want, that's absolutely fine. Um, but keep track of what you have already um, claimed for, because they, HMRC won't tell you, it won't tell you what you've claimed for. Um, they will they will just like there won't be a list. There won't be anything to say what you've already claimed for. So just be organised, keep a list, and you can claim for it any time during the tax year. But we just recommend claiming at the end of the tax year because then you know it's done, you know it's all accurate, you know it's complete and that's why we say at the end of the tax year but it really doesn't matter. Well, what did you say? What is, is your, is your pensionable pay above um, 29634? This is wrong, look, because it there's a jump. Hang on, this is incorrect. This is great. This is their uh, their website. That's better. Okay. So there we go. So if you are if your pensionable pay is to twenty nine thousand one hundred and seventy nine pounds or less, then it will be eight point eight. Seven point seven, if that's the window in which your pay comes. Most of us will be in this one, so it'll be 9.8. Why do you think yours should be 9.8 instead of then leave it. No, Wales is different. So the NHS pension is this, all of this is for all of the NHS across the UK. It's not just, um, not just England. So this, uh, this, this um, pension bit does apply to Wales. But the Wales Income PAYE. So Wales have a different set. Oh, there's a, so in Wales, you also get the 12, 5, 750 at 
then you get the basic rate of 20% at that 50, 270, which is slightly different um, to the, so hours in England is, is the same. And then this one is slightly less, so you actually pay 40% to up to 125, 140 in England, but in, sorry, in Wales, but in England, you pay 40% up to 150K. So there, this higher rate, an additional rate is slightly less in Wales, which kind of sucks. That's not very nice for you guys. Um, I mean, to be fair, if you're making 125, 140, then that's nice, I guess. Um, and your NI will be slightly different as well. So Wales, so in Wales, this is based on a weekly and it is 12% instead of the 12.5% in England. Um, so, plus one, God, this is clunky, yeah. So basically, if anything between 1,148 to 4,189 a month is at 12%. And, and then anything over 4,189 a month is at 2%. So your NI is slightly different as well. Annual salary, not ever. So basically, NI is easier to do on an annual basis. So anything over 9,500 to 50K is at 12.5%. Um, and then anything over 50K is at 2%. So you can just take your annual salary, salary take 9,500 off, and then multiply that by 12.5% and then divide that by 12. And that's your NI. I don't know what you're talking about with the 12, 50 and 6% rise of what? You're going to have to clarify where this 1,250 and 6% rise is. What do you mean? Is it income tax? Is it? Oh, this is if they accept the um, offer. Well, you'll get the 1,250 as a lump sum, and then that will be based on income tax. And then your 6% rise will also be based, like the income tax will just... They've announced it, but we're not going to get it until we accept it. It's an offer. So the junior doctors have um, balloted to strike again. And so they, it means that they haven't accepted the pay rise. Nope, still striking. 6% isn't good enough.
Oh goodness, if you don't have an NI number, that's emergency text, which is at the higher rate of 45%. But you will get it back as when, when that's all sorted out. But you shouldn't be able to get a job without an NI number, unless they give you like a temporary something while it's all being sorted out. Um, but you'll be taxed at 45% until everything's kind of sorted out and then they will recalculate it at the end of the year and it's very likely that they will owe you money. Um, so what they tend to do is they tend to tax you much less going forward rather than give you a check. Okay, if that's all the questions, then um, thank you for joining. I would suggest going over this one more time um, because I go went through the payslip quite slowly. So I split it all up. I explained exactly what was important to look for in each bit, explained what it meant. So just go through that again um, and check yours. And then you show you saw me search exactly what inf information and how to find it. Is our annual salary twelve times NI pay or pensionable pay? Um, neither of those things. It's your annual salary is your base salary plus because um, your annual annual salary will change based on your placements. So your base salary is uh, I think one of our colleagues very kindly two nine three eight four I th I think. Your base salary is for 40 hours, then you'll be making additional on top of the weekend nights um, and then additional roster hours. And then that will obviously change from rotation to rotation. So it's not 12 times an I pay or 12 times pensional book pay. Your annual salary will change. So um, the best way to explain your annual salary is to just quote the base rate, which is two nine, whatever, whatever. Because your NI pay and pensional pay changes based on all those different factors. No worries, pay slips are complicated, unnecessarily complicated and annoying. Um, and tax. Yeah, tax. Um, yeah. Okay. Okie dokie, I'm going to go. If you guys, so follow me on Instagram at the finance medic. And if you have any questions, then you can either so drop me a message on Instagram or that's my email. Um, so if you think of any more questions, just drop them in. Don't worry if your payslip is wrong. It is month one. You have 12 months. You have bloody 12 times 5, you have 60 months to sort it out because that's how far back you can go. So you can go back five years if there's something wrong and HMRC will do what needs to be done about it. So, you know, it's not, you know, it's, you would like things to be correct. It would be really nice if you didn't have to stress about it. 
But don't worry, it's month one. There are lots of teething problems. Things are always difficult because for a lot of people, this is their first employment. For some, they've got a part-time job previously and it's all a bit messy. Things do even out. HMRC are always reviewing. And by the end of the tax year, you tend to get things evened out and the tax codes readjusted. So even if you're being emergency tax, as much as that's a pain in the ass, it's not the end of the world. They're not going to keep it forever. You will get it back either as reduced tax in the next however, whatever year or as a lump sum if they think that's more appropriate, if it's quite a high amount. So just make sure HMRC have the correct information on you. You can do that with a government gateway account. Um, and make sure that you're collecting all your pay slips because that will help you make a case if anything needs doing and you're keeping a copy. Make sure that you're being paid correctly for the hours that you do, which means the 40 hours base rate, any additional roster hours, your night and your weekends are correct. The weekend one is really annoying because they will give you the weekend premium that's the cheapest that they can get away with. So for example, let me give you an example and this pissed me right off um so basically just weekend premium so right um premium doctor right so what they can do is you so those are your pay scales um so 29384 in england scotland wales and northern ireland um and here are your um this is for scotland weekends there we go okay so basically if you do say in the month you do three one and two weekends and then one one and three weekend they can get away with giving you 10% instead of 15% uplift. If you do three one in four weekends and then one of one in five weekends, they can get away with giving you 6% instead of seven and a half. So like, have a look at how many weekends you're doing in when it's one in four, like just count the number of weekends in that rotor in that month and see how many that you're doing. And they'll always give you the lesser amount because they can get away with it basically so that's your weekend allowance on call allowance we don't get um we get 37 percent premium for nights um let me just confirm that So we don't get bandings, Scotland and Wales, you guys get bandings. And um, my friend is in Edinburgh and these bandings are really rubbish. Like she can be on a really horrifically antisocial rotor and not be on the correct banding. There we go, enhanced or unsociable hours. This is 37% of the hourly basic pay that you're on nights and it starts from nine till seven. Um, there we go. Okay. Brilliant. Um, I hope you found that useful and, um, yeah, drop me any questions if you need. Take care, everybody.